the thing we were talking about last time was resumes that failed to make the grade. And what we're going to do is we're going to continue that conversation because we got a lot of people who just graduated this past weekend from high schools, from colleges. And uh, and let me tell you, you need help with your resume. You, you know, everybody has something that needs to be lots of other stuff, too. And she joins us once again on Big Mornings in the Big AM 1380. Rejoining us once again, Dr. Tracy Weiland. Dr. Weiland, good to have you back with us, ma'am. Oh, good morning, Ted, and thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. Now, I know we were talking a little bit about resumes and a few things to to watch out for when it comes to resumes and making sure that you're keeping on top of things and not turning your resume into something that's yeah, it's kind of a mishmash, if you will, because let's face it, you have to have a focused resume when it comes to today's uh, job market, especially as competitive as today's job market is. You really have to have it honed in, don't you, Tracy? You do. You do. So, the, you know, the purpose of the resume, which we had talked about, is that it's not getting you the job. You're going to get the job if you get the interview. So you need to use this valuable piece of real estate to get you that interview, which means in the digital world, we have all these job boards now with job job openings. So it means we have to actually customize that one page to be so compelling that somebody, when scanning it, will pull it out and say, i got to bring this person in for an interview. And the way you do that is by customizing each resume for the job requirements. Right, and that's the thing, because I, when we're talking about job requirements. What it comes down to as well, and I think this is where we left off from the last time that we were discussing resumes, has to do with more than just honing in on your resume on a particular job, honing in on the job that works best for you, simply because there are a lot of people that are out there, job hunters, they apply for jobs that they're not necessarily qualified for, but they might want to do the job. So really what's going on is applicants send out a bunch of different resumes. I like the term you use for it, spray and pray. And you know, and because of that, basically what happens is when it comes to getting responses from employers, it, they come in few and far between. So when it comes to that, when it comes to honing in, on jobs that you would be best qualified for to get the best results for that resume, you know, that you're putting together and giving it to the right people regarding getting a job that fits your your skill set and the requirements that are necessary. What are some tips you can give regarding honing in on the right job and fitting it in with your resume? Sure. So for the college student or the high school graduate, there are now plenty of job boards out there just for you. So I would go to those because that's where you find the internships. That's where you find entry-level jobs, no experience necessary. Or go to the companies in your area, for example, that you want to work for and look on their career sites. And they will also be categories for a recent graduate. So I think you have to be very realistic that if you don't, you know, if you're just out of high school or college, go to the go to the areas that are going to welcome you. Don't go to a job description that asks for five years of sales experience if you do not have it, because it's just a waste of your time and it's a waste of someone else's time on the other end. For an adult. Now you have to really think about who would hire me for what I can get paid for. Because as adults, we're very seasoned. We have a lot of experiences. And now we have to say, okay, which is the one, the most recent one that I can get hired for? And it's going to probably be either what you're doing now or what you did in your last job. Because what you did 10 years ago is probably not relevant anymore because the world has changed. And then you only look for those jobs. Look at the bottom of the page. It always has the requirements. If you can't meet 80% of the requirements, then let the job go. Because remember, the resume is not going to get you hired. It's going to get you the interview. So if you don't meet the 80%, you'll never get in to do that compelling interview that you really want. So I think that's where we have to really rethink our approach to applying to jobs. And let me just mention this as well. Sending into job boards, right? That's, you know, so now you have this custom resume. It's probably taking you a good hour. Are you going to be passive? Are you just going to send it into the black hole? 
Or do you want to take that extra step and find out who is the hiring manager? Maybe you could go directly to that person and get their attention to get you in for that interview. Yeah, because let's just face it, because, you know, if you're going to throw a dart, and that's basically what, you know, submitting resumes without really doing any sort of pre-search or research, you know, when it comes to, or follow-up for that matter, when it comes to resumes, you know, what it comes down to is looking into these companies and finding out those people who are making the decisions and, 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 albeit it's like this is where networking skills comes in handy too kicking in with that and really just finding a way of getting you know getting across in in a number of different ways because i guess it really comes down to having a tool belt when it comes to a number of different ways of getting into uh, uh getting into an employment situation the resume may be you know an, an entree, but really, in some cases, you need uh, something to kind of grease the uh, grease the way in when it comes to yeah. The resume comes in handy, but really, you have to know a few other things along the way too, right, Tracy? Yes, and you know, you're bringing up a very good point. You know, still today, 65 to 75 percent of jobs are found through other people because people hire people. So if someone can introduce you to someone who has a job opening that's going to be a much faster track. Or if you have a colleague who's working in a company and they can refer you in, well, that's just going to be a much faster track because you're, you're establishing trust through that person. You know, Ted, I had a, a show and a, a young lady called in and she said, you know, my, I didn't have the experience and, you know, on my resume, but I got the job. And I mm-hmm. said, walk me through how you got the job. She said, well, a friend of mine introduced me to a hiring manager who had an opening, and then I convinced him that I was, through all my experience, the, one of the best candidates. And I said, you see, you already got the interview. You didn't need the resume. At that point, the resume became your talking points, right? Not getting you the job. You got yourself the job, but she got it through a person. So I think people just really need to drive that connection about how to get in front of a person so that you can become that compelling person they want to hire. Right, because let's just, what Tracy is mentioning is this. What's the first word in the word interview? In. You have to get the in, in many cases, before you can get the interview. And that's really what happened there. Yes, yes. And so then, then you know, so that to me is, if your whole focus is, how do I get the interview, what, how can I fast track it? Mm-hmm. You probably would start to realize that job boards are pretty passive methods, and there could be more strategic methods that you could do. Right. One other thing, when it comes to your resume, you want to make sure it aligns with all your other presences. For example, LinkedIn, because you don't you want to make sure one mistake you don't want to make is uh, to note, you know, you don't want mismatched profiles. That's the thing, right, Tracy? That's right. So, and that can happen if we're customizing our resume. So, you want to make sure that you have the facts and figures stable uh, on both your LinkedIn profile and on your resume and wherever else you might post it. So, if you say that you graduated in a certain year at a certain major with a certain GPA, keep that consistent on all profiles. If you said that you did an internship or you worked at a certain company in a certain job with a certain title, keep that consistent. Then you can customize the resume with the, with the sub bullets on the experiences that are most relevant to the position that you're applying for. I also encourage people to use social media in a more strategic way, just like adults do and professionals do. That is, if I am pursuing a marketing job, why not use Facebook as my marketing platform? That's where I put photos of me um, doing a marketing volunteer work or an internship or a blog. I use Twitter to retweet marketing headlines or news or things that I'm doing, then I can use my social media as an extension of my marketing brand. And as an employer is searching for me, they will see all of this matching and building the presence that I'm a great marketing person. There you go. That's the way to go about it. Dr. Tracy Weiland joining us, talking about resumes and things not to do on your resume if you're looking to uh, get hired 
for a job now that you're graduating or just looking for a better job. Joining us on Big Mornings in the Big AM 1380. And w- the last thing you mentioned, the fifth mistake uh, out of the last couple times we've been talking about resumes, and I think this is pretty common sense, but a lot of people try to slip it through. They lie. Don't lie. Not a good idea. That's right. And we're, we live in a very digital world, and therefore we have a lot more transparency today. And so an, an employers really will check. They'll check your previous employers and your education credentials. They run a background check. Um, that will expose things, you know, like driving violations or drug use or alcohol. Many companies will do a drug test. If you say that you're a programmer, they will probably give you a test before you even get an interview to make sure that you're not lying. If you're pursuing jobs in banking, they probably will do financial checks. So you need to be very clear and honest and transparent because if you lie, you will likely be found out and then you'll have other issues where where you won't even be able to get into an interview or job consideration. Yeah, and we know about a few very um, prominent situations where people lied on their resume and uh, it turns out that they ended up losing a, an opportunity along the way. There was a co- fellow who was going to be coaching Notre Dame, the football team, and it turns out they found out he fudged his resume. He ended up getting kicked out of the job. They ended up hiring somebody else along the way. So keep that in mind. One last question I do want to ask you, uh, Tracy, when it comes to this time of year and a lot of grads out looking for jobs right now, um, grades, do they come in handy? And when it comes to the comparison between experience and grades, is there a way of measuring things out with one being more important than the other? What are your thoughts on that, Tracy? Well, if you're a student and you have a phenomenal GPA, uh, you made the honors list, you know, salutatorium, valedictorian, summa cum laude, you know, all of that, then put it right up there because employers will want to hire very smart people. If that's not your strong point, then you may want to put up the great internship that you had. Like, lead with your strength, right? And the other thing is for students, remember, everything counts. If you had a job in McDonald's or Walmart, you know, well, you were in the food and beverage industry or retail. So translate that into terms that I, as a business manager, can understand. If you were working on the floor with customers, well, then you were in customer service, or you may have been in sales. If you did some volunteer work for one of the political campaigns and you were on the phone, well, you're a telemarketer. So just start to translate all of your activities that you've done, you know, summer jobs, internships, and even coursework. You know, you work on teams, you know, and, you know, tell me how you drove the team to success and how your team project got an A, right? So that, to me, I can understand because these are things that we do in the workforce. If students just tell me about school, then they're forcing me to make the connection, and I don't know them yet because I'm just reading a piece of paper. Right, and that's the thing, too, because soft skills are are the key right now, and people are looking for people to employ, especially younger people, with good soft skills, right? Yeah, so soft skills, you know, in one of my research studies, still communication skills comes up as the number one highly desired soft skill for leaders today, and that means speaking, that means writing, that means uh, being able to work with colleagues on teams, being able to interface with vendors, uh, customers, because employers realize that the employees are the brand of the company and that they are the touch point, so they need to be have a very strong brand for whatever company they work for and be able to communicate, and that's very critical today still, even in a digital world. That's Dr. Tracy Weiland. She knows what she's talking about when it comes to resumes or, for that matter, anything that comes to careers, work, uh, leadership, technology, and a whole lot more. Joining us on Big Mornings on the Big AM 1380. You get a lot of different presences uh, on the uh, on the web, don't you, Tracy? Yes, I am. Uh, my website is tracywyland.com, T-R-A-C-E-Y-W-I-L-E-N. I am on Instagram and on LinkedIn, of course, Facebook and Twitter, and um, so I'm pretty easy to find if people have a question or want to contact me. All right. Well, Dr. Weiland, it's always good having you on the program. Thanks for joining us again. We appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great day. And you do the same, man.